it happened two million years ago. In steaming swamps and prehistoric jungles, the earliest man-like creature walked the earth. Not human, more beast than man. A monster of evolution. It walked across the eons of time, slowly changing, becoming more and more human, more and more advanced, until in the Pleistocene, just thousands of years ago, man himself emerged. But the change from beast into man was not a steady one, and sometimes primitive man would find his life threatened, terrified by the appearance of a monster from the past. In museums and universities throughout the world, archaeologists are learning more each day about prehistoric man. Archaeologists are highly skilled, specialized scientists. They know where to look, what to look for, and occasionally they make a discovery of tremendous importance. This is the story of such a discovery. It began a year ago, not in a museum, but on the campus of a high school in the Southwest. Five high school students and their teacher met with Dr. Bill Wyman, curator of the Lincoln County Museum, an outstanding archeologist. These seven people were planning a trip to the small town of Ivanpah. Their purpose? to help the museum excavate and uncover the ruins of an ancient Indian campsite. Not one of these seven ever suspected that they would soon make a startling, terrifying discovery.
sleeping bags and leave them here. Is this where we're going to sleep? Here you go, Johnny. Yes. Uh -huh. Whose house is this? This belongs to one of the museum association members. No one lives here right now, so he lets us use the place whenever we want. This is one we found in some cliff ruins just last year. You can put your sleeping bags down on the floor. We'll straighten up tonight when we get back. Shall we go? quite a few Indian petroglyphs up in this area. Yes, this country was literally dotted with Indian campsites at one time. Mr. Mason, what are petroglyphs? <laughs> oh, well, petroglyphs are Indian rock writings. Oh. Come on with me and I'll show you some. Petroglyphs are Indian writings that have been scratched into the rock. These have been painted on the rock with berry juice stain. We call these pictographs. Well, what do they say? Can you read them? We've been able to figure most of them out. They tell of the history of a great Indian tribe, one that lived around here thousands of years ago. There were two chiefs in the tribe, many, many braves. They hunted the deer and the rabbit with bows and arrows. And they believed that the sun and the rain were powerful gods who were continually fighting each other. Gee, how can you tell all that? We have to study these symbols a long time. Basically, though, this is just a big primitive history book. Stay, Bill, let me get a picture of that. I wonder if you'd just point at that. <laughs> all right. And the rest of you be looking at it. I'll get it from over here. <laughs> That's a rabbit. Oh, interesting. Bob, see Bob, would you kneel down there and be looking at the rock? Now that's good. Just look at the rock and hold it. Good. Got it. Now I guess we better get to work. Right. But where's the excavation? Right back this way. This is where we've begun excavation. What sort of thing do you suppose we might find? Well, that's pretty hard to tell. The only thing we've located so far... Well, here, I'll show you. Hmm. 
these are pieces of old Indian pottery. And these are prayer sticks. Prayer sticks? Mm-hmm. At least that's what we think they are. Prayer sticks were used by some of the ancient tribes as religious symbols. They actually buried them with their dead. You mean we're going to dig in a graveyard? <laughs> well, that's possible, though I doubt if we'll locate any bodies. These prayer sticks may be over a thousand years old. Say, do you think we'll find any bones? With everything being this old, it's very unlikely, but it's still possible. Of course, it's also possible we may not find a thing. It's sure we won't find anything if we don't get busy. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? I know, what do we do? Let's start digging. Okay. Hey, Bill, look at this piece of pottery that Bob found. You just found it, Bob? Yeah, over there in the diggings. We, we do well, that's that. That's a good pottery there. fragment. I want to take this back to the museum with us. Keep up the good work. By the way, what time is it? 20 after 12. Getting a little late. Lunch time! Oh, boy. <laughs> you boys ready for, for lunch? Boy, you said it. Good, I'll get it from the truck. I'll give you a hand. Everybody hungry? Yeah. You know, I finally made it. Yeah. Well, we have sandwiches here for everybody. Good. Johnny, this is yours. Right. Roger, this is yours. Oh, good. Thank you. And here's Sharon and Linda. Oh, thank you. Bob. I suppose you see now why most people don't like this part of museum work. You mean the food or the digging? <laughs> why <Wise> digging? <laughs> By the way, did we find anything of value today, Mr. Wyman? Oh, yes. For instance, this rock. This was used to grind up seed to make flour for bread. Notice the worn edges on it? And this pottery, We'll take it back to the museum and study it more carefully. I think we can tell exactly how old it is. More prayer sticks? Mm hmm more <laughs> prayer sticks. Say, Mr. Mason, what's this rock? Boy, look at the carbon I don't know. I haven't seen anything quite like this. I found it over there when we were looking at those Indian pictographs. Let's ask Mr. Wyman about that. Say, Bill, take a look at this rock that Norman found. Where did you find this? Over there where you showed us those Indian writings. What's wrong with it? Nothing's wrong. This might be an eolith. What's that? A very, very old tool. One used by ancient peoples. This is by far the oldest thing we've found here. Hmm. Let me see it. Could you show us where you found that? Sure, it was uh, right over there. Hey. It was right around here somewhere. Just lying on top of the ground. I picked it up for a souvenir. I collect rocks. You collected a good one this time. Well, I don't see anything else. All of these are just plain old rocks. Well, it seems funny that it'll be lying just on top of the ground, doesn't it? Yes. Unless it fell. Up there. Maybe it fell from up there and rolled down. 
Yeah, it looks like there's a ledge up there. Let's go up and see. All right. You'll have to find some other place to get up, though. We'd never make it from here. I think I'll stay down. Me too. <laughs> need a climbing rope in the truck. I'll get it. Down. Yeah. Boy, isn't that a long drop? That's Sharon and Linda down there. <laughs> Hello! Let's see. Are we above the spot where the rock fell? Over there. Let's look around down here. Doesn't look as if we're going to find any of those rocks around here. I can't even see that small ledge from here. Can you? No, uh uh. Let's see, we were standing down there by that thick brush. Hey, what's this? tablet of some kind. Boy, this is really something. Yeah, but what? Do you recognize those markings, Bill? No. No, those are strange to me. They look rather primitive, don't they? 
They look older than any other markings I've ever seen. Were they made by Indians, do you think? No, not these. These are the types of markings made by cavemen. Cavemen? Perhaps as ancient as Pithecanthropus erectus, the earliest known species of ape man. Oh. Seems to be sealed along the edges here in mud. Yeah, I brought my rock there. Try digging it away over in there. Be careful not to hit the rock. How are we gonna get it back to the truck? We're going to carry it back. You think we can get it out? Here's the bottom edge. All right. Careful. Let's try lifting it now. Boy, never put that in there, wanted it to stay. This is an ordinary mud. Boy, it's a clay, some sort of rosin added. Sure is hard. Maybe if we use the rock hammer to pry up on it. All right, try it. I'm sure you won't break it. No, they won't break it. Okay, Bob, pull. I think it moved a little. Not much. Let's try it again. Maybe if we lift up on it while the boys pull. All right. I'll count to three and everyone pull. Ready now? One, two, three, pull! What's that? What happened? What happened? Wait a minute. Hey, there's a hole down there. I wish we had a flashlight. Can you see anything? Why, it looks like it might be a cave. What are you doing? I'm going down inside. So am I. Me too. We can't all go in. Well, I'll stay up here. Will you stay up here too, Roger? Well, all right, but you be careful. Get a good grip on that rope. It's pretty solid. For a minute now, let your eyes get accustomed to the darkness. What kind of a cave is this? Natural formation? Probably so. It looks as if these cracks in the wall have been sealed up with mud. Look, pottery! These are perfectly preserved. What's inside? Not ashes of a person. Somebody cremated? No. These are wood ashes. Charcoal. We'll take these jars with us. Be careful not to spill any of the ashes. Look, look this one has writing or something on it. And those markings are similar to the ones on the tablet up above.
did you find? There's a body over there. with mud. What a find. Yeah. How can we get it out? We're going to need some more ropes from the truck and some boards to tie it and hold it flat. that's over with. Something tells me Bob doesn't think much of our new passenger. <laughs> well, it's the first time I've ever ridden with a mummy. <laughs> I'll open the door to the shed. We leave it there tonight. You mean we're going to put it in there? You wouldn't want to leave a mummy outside, would you? Suppose it rains. <laughs> Be careful bringing it in. I'll get this end down here. Okay, I'll get here. here. Bob, you get that corner and on that side. Inside? I'm afraid if we try opening it here, we may destroy something. Yes, sometimes just exposing a body to the air will cause it to fall apart. That's okay. If that happens, Bob will sew the pieces back together. <laughs> we'll take it to the museum the first thing tomorrow morning. There we can examine it more closely. You know, you people have done a wonderful thing today. This could prove to be the most significant archaeological discovery of our age. I can't get over how well preserved this is. Perfectly preserved. And I think I know why. Because it was sealed in that cave? No, not, not exactly. Do you remember the vapor that shot up out of the hole when we pried the stone tablet loose? Do I, I'll say. I thought we'd had it right then. I believe that some ancient tribe buried this mummy, not just thousands of years ago, but hundreds of thousands. They were very primitive. Their writings and pottery work show that. And yet these people had found the secret of truly preserving the dead. But how? 
They combined certain amounts of various woods and resins that were present on the earth at that time. They put them in those earthen vessels we found and burned them in a sealed cave. The smoke and the incense had the power of preserving whatever was in the cave. So that's why the jars we found were filled with ashes. And that vapor that escaped from the cave was a preservative smoke, hundreds of thousands of years old. Well, that's my theory. I could very easily be wrong, though. Hey, it moved. What moved? The money moved. Sure, <laughs> sure. It did. It moved its hand. Looks like your story got through to Norman. <laughs> I didn't mean it was that well preserved. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm sure it really did move. I was looking right at that hand, and it just moved, just a little bit. You'll understand. Norman watches television a lot. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. Don't tell your story now. Wait until later on this evening, just before we go to bed. Well, I think right now, at any rate, we should all eat dinner. Good idea. I can use something. Boy, it sounds like it. This day certainly did go by fast. I only wished I would have gone with you guys when you climbed up on those rocks. That was quite an experience. And where were we? Waiting down below. Well, when I looked up and saw that ledge and that sheer cliff, well, I always feel a lot better on solid ground. <laughs> So next week, all the newspapers are printing big stories about how we found a mummy. Maybe even magazines. Well, what's wrong with that? Yeah. All my friends will be asking me what I did, what happened, what did I do when I first saw that mummy lying there in that cave like it has been for thousands of years. And what am I going to tell them? That I didn't do anything because I wasn't even in the cave. I was too afraid to climb up on the rock. Well, you weren't alone. I can see the pictures on the front of the school paper of you guys prying up that stone thing and all my friends asking me, where were you? Tell them you took the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, I sure could go for a bottle of pop. The country store is open until 9 o'clock if you want to walk up there. How far is it? If you cut through the orange grove, it isn't far. About a 10-minute walk. There's a well-worn path, so you can't get lost. Want to walk up? Sure, sounds like fun. Anybody else want to go along? So you plan on bringing in the rest of those jars for a closer look, don't you? Yes. And then I think I'll stay here. I think I'll go outside, too, for the fresh air. Yes, don't feel you have to stay inside. The country up here is pleasant at night. I'm too tired to go anywhere. It's sure that if I go out there, something important will happen here. And if I stay here, they'll probably find flying saucers. <laughs> By the way, you can bring me back a bottle of orange pop if you want. Where's the dime? My friend. Come on, dig it out. And three cents deposit. Unless you want me to have to drink it there. No, I'm going to conserve my energy and stay here.
No more reason to fight. It's what? Look, Norman, this is just about... <laughs> Sure is a nice sky. The moon's so bright, you don't even need a flashlight. I love the country at night, don't you? Look at the stars. There must be billions of them. Living in town all the time, I guess you never realize how many there really are. Wouldn't it be great to live out here instead of in the city? Boy, I'll say. Shall we cut through the grove again? I guess so. We found our way the first time. There's not much light in here. If we stay on the path, we'll be okay. Yeah, if we can see it well enough. You get down to the next house and warn them. I'll get Johnny and Sharon and meet you here. Right. Let's get out of the grove. Come on. Oh, yes. No, the children are all asleep. What time do you expect to be home?
Bill. Walt, it's good to see you, especially now. I just came from the Mitchell Ranch. Walt, this is Roger Mason, a teacher at the high school. How do you do? How are you, Mason? And this is Johnny, one of his students. Hi, Sheriff. Hello, Johnny. We were up digging at the Indian site yesterday, and that's where we discovered the cave and the mummy. Bill, of all the weird stories I've heard, this is the strangest. If it weren't for you boys, I wouldn't believe it. How do you account for it? I can't. I have only a theory that the smoke and the vapor in that cave must have caused the body to lie dormant or asleep for possibly hundreds of thousands of years. When we opened up the cave and let the air in... I told you I just came from the Mitchell Ranch where the girl was killed last night. I covered the body as soon as I got there, but some of the neighbors had seen it first. The story's going around that there's a bear come down from the mountains. One of the windows was badly smashed. The door of the shed where we put the mummy was smashed, too. Let's have a look at it. This mud, just like the lab man found by the body. Funny red stuff. The mummy was sealed with mud just like that. It broke out of its wrappings. What's it look like now? We don't know. We just caught a glimpse of it as it ran into that grove. It stood erect, but was larger than a man. That's as much as we could tell. Last night, after it killed a girl, one of the neighbors said that he shot at something running into the grove. The orange and lemon groves in this part of the country are so extensive, the thing could travel for miles and never leave the protection of the trees. Let's go look at the place that you saw it run into the grove. Looks as if it's been along here. here. Look at the broken branches. Why, there's blood on the ground, isn't it? Yes. I think we found the spot where the creature stayed last night. But what's the blood from? Well, my guess is the fellow who shot at it last night must have hit it. What makes you say that? Because this isn't ordinary blood. This is too dark in color. He told me he had hit it. 
But he must have missed it. Why? Because I saw the gun that he used. It was a large caliber. Three shots from that would have stopped anything. Anything? Well, it's sure that if a hunting rifle didn't stop it, that revolver of yours wouldn't do much good either. And it's too dangerous trying to track it down through these groves. Do you have an idea? Well, maybe we can lure it into the open field. It's worth a try. Just about do it, shouldn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. Now let's set those cans of gasoline around where we can get at them fast. All right. I'll show them where. Good. I got all the meat scraps they had. How are we going to know when it's coming so we can pour out the gas? Well, we'll situate someone up the road to see through the trees and give the signal when it comes. We can use the radio telephone in my car, and I have a portable unit in the back. Good. Push this button down to talk and let it up to receive. That way you'll be able to communicate with the telephone in my car. Good. See, why don't you take your car and station yourself on the road out here? Just a minute. Who's going into the grove with the bait? I thought I would. Why you? I was going to do that part. Well, it's my idea. That's a mighty dangerous idea, too, Roger. You don't know where that thing may be hiding. All right. Let's draw straws between the two of us to see who goes in. OK. The one who gets the shortest straw has the job. Why three straws? I'm in on this, too. Looks like I win anyway. I'll be down by the road. And I'll be on this radio. Roger. You're more apt to need this than I am. The gas is all ready. Good. Well, I'll be back. 
back in a few minutes. So be careful. Sheriff's ready. He's got a good view through the grove from where he's parked. Yes, we've already communicated with him. Oh. Well. Now all we do is wait here until it comes out of the grove. It's been a half hour. This is Bill, Walt. See anything yet? Nothing yet. Beginning to look as if this idea isn't going to work. Let's wait another 20 or 30 minutes anyway. Roger. Yes, Walt. I see something here, I think. Branches in one of the trees that just moved. I'm going to take a closer look. Hold on. Well, you better be careful. You'll hear from me within a minute. almost three minutes. Walt. Come in, Walt. Something's wrong. Come on. Bring along those flares, Johnny. Better grab that gasoline, too. Here. 